Hello, welcome back to 40 Days with the Fathers. Today we're on day 31, and the last stretch of Lent now, 10 more days to go. Um, we're still carrying on with Cyril of Jerusalem's Catech Catechetical Lectures. This is lecture 20. And today's lecture is on the mysteries by Cyril is on baptism. And there's an exposition based on Romans 6 verses 13 to 14, which says, do you not know that all of us have been all of who all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death, since you are not under law but under grace? Now, these people that Cyril was teaching had already gone through the act of baptism, so now he was going over the symbolism and realities of what that meant to them personally. In describing the baptism rite, to make one of his points, Cyril gives us a small insight into how the church in the 4th century performed this, which I always find interesting to see how things have changed or saved the same over centuries. Before entering the waters, the one being baptised would strip off their tunic, symbolising putting off the old man with his deeds. Um, referencing what Paul says in Colossians there. And would then be naked, as Christ was naked on the cross. In doing this, they may no longer pick up the old garment anymore, meaning to the old self and not the physical tunic, which waxes corrupt in the lusts of deceit. So, uh, I found that odd at first. Kind of glad we don't do it naked anymore. But I like the symbolism of it all. The whole you know, stripping of the old, putting on the new. And um, Cyril, there's a quote from Cyril here, what he says about it. He goes, O wondrous thing, you were naked in the sight of all, and were not ashamed. For truly you bore the likeness of the first formed Adam, who was naked in the garden, and was not ashamed. After this, they were anointed with oil from head to toe, to symbolise being cut off from the wild olive tree, and grafted into the good one, Jesus Christ. During this time of anointing, they are cleansed by the invocation of God and by prayer, and not only to burn and cleanse away the traces of the sin, but also to chase away all the invisible powers of the evil one. Next, being led to the baptismal pool as Christ was carried from the cross to the tomb, they make their declaration of faith and are baptised three times in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Three times in the water as Christ was three days in the grave. Though we don't really die, nor get buried, nor get resurrected in that moment physically, our imitation was in a figure and our salvation in reality, Cyril explains. <clears throat> like many other early church writers, Cyril views baptiz baptism as a way in which our sins are washed away, probably due to passages like Acts 2.38, which says, where Peter is in his, his uh, first preach to everyone, where he says, so that your sins may be forgiven and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And again in 2 Peter 3 verse 21, which says, And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience. And that whole theme carries on throughout the early church. Um, so Cyril writes that baptism purges our sins and ministers to us the gift of the Holy Ghost, and it is our part in the sufferings of Christ, Recalling what Paul says in Romans 6, verse 3, that we are all baptised into his death. But he makes a point to emphasize, of emphasis that while these are symbols and figures of what happens to us during baptism, that Christ actually was crucified, died, and was buried, and rose again in reality. In your case, there was only a likeness of death and sufferings, whereas of salvation... There was not a likeness, but a reality. Remember these things, he says, and keep them at the forefront of your mind, because it is God who has presented you as alive from the dead. After reading all of this, it just reinforces my own conviction on how important baptism is. But also how misunderstood it can be, or how flippant it is sometimes presented in certain churches or denominations today. And that whole, I don't know, maybe it's just limited experience but sometimes it's just like you know do baptism whenever or whatever it's not seen 
such an important right. Well, it is in some places, but not maybe as important as the way Cyril explains it. The reality of it is not there as much because it's it's been symbolised too much. If that makes sense. It's just become a you know the the outward side of the inward change type thing, rather than it being the reality of our salvation and receiving the Holy Spirit as the early church taught consistently and the actual washing of our sins of everything past like we saw in a few days ago in Life of Anthony he was saying about in that vision where he saw everyone going up to heaven that the evil one could only accuse Anthony of his sins post-baptism everything prior to that was washed away and cleansed by God not that God doesn't forgive us after that, but anything before our baptism and our rebirth into Christ is non-existent now. Our repentance should be of sins doing we've done since our baptism and becoming Christians. Um, so anyway, little tangent there. Let's get back to this. Uh, maybe some of the catechism teaching courses on what baptism means should still be taught in churches beforehand to new Christians, similar to how evangelical type churches have the Alpha course, if you're, to, which to, if you're not familiar with, it gives an overview of Christian doctrine. Other than Anglicans, Roman Catholics and other more traditional dom denominations like Lutherans, Eastern Orthodox, etc., we still have a form of catechesis for baptism. Anglicans and Catholics call it confirmation. Other newer denominations don't really have anything like this. Baptism is a lot more casual. It just seems to me that something so important and transformative should have a little more teaching and explanation before someone enters it. Um, similar, just reminded myself while I'm reading that, in the Didache as well, talking about baptism, is that the person getting baptised and even the people doing the baptism should fast for three days beforehand as well and they'll run up to it and as part of the catechisms of teaching so they fast and prepare themselves and get taught about what's being what they're entering into and why and what it all means so I mean all of that I think it should still be there today if it's not and Paul spends a lot of time teaching on the spirituality of baptism and how it relates us to Christ in the physical and spiritual way, how this is pretty much the moment in which we are saved or regenerated and become the new creation. The early church seemed to grasp the magnitude of this, and maybe it's time our less traditional churches did this again. So, let me know your thoughts on it. It's obviously sometimes quite a controversial topic. Um, on one hand, you have like traditional reforms people saying baptism saves not to diminish what Jesus did on the cross or to remove it but that the reality of baptism is us receiving our salvation the new creation the spirit all of that so it is part of the salvation package whereas on the other hand you say have people saying it's just symbolic of our faith that's that it's basically just a bath with some extra meaning attached to it so two extremes i am more on the traditional end now didn't used to be but after reading all of these writing this book yeah, um it helped me see it a different way maybe will you or it won't let me know what you think in the comments and see all the links below or how you can support me or just like and share this video Thanks, see you tomorrow.